Hello, it's David. I recently answered a question on Reddit. This is the question. Can someone explain par rates to me, please? This is a question that I think we see in the FRM almost every year, and I understand why. Par rates, which are also called par yields, are not as intuitive as spot rates and forward rates. So I gave my answer. It's a few paragraphs and explained why I think they're important. I've also previously recorded a video on the par yield and showed you specifically how we calculated and specifically what it means with and in relation to yield to maturity. So I'll put a link to that video in the description because that's not my purpose here. My purpose here, going back to this answer that I gave on Reddit, is to show you as quickly as possible what the par yield is and most importantly to show you why I think it's very special and maybe the most important rate or yield of all. And so to do that, I've illustrated here as simple a possible setup as I can think of. And my inputs are in yellow and you can see, so those are the zero rates. These are also called spot rates. And I'm only doing them annually. So we're not gonna do semi-annual or continuous compounding, nothing too fancy. Annual compound frequency, five spot rates over the next five years, five-year maturity. And so those are inputs, I've just assumed that. And then I've also here plotted the associated uh, forward rate curve that is implied by the spot rate curve. So if you're in the CFA FRM, you probably know that my upward sloping spot rate curve implies an even steeper upward sloping forward curve, but I'm not gonna go into the definition of that here. Rather, we'll start here with the all important discount factors. Each of these five discount factors, together we call that a discount function, and that is just a simple discounting at the annual compound frequency per each of the spot rates here, right? So I don't, we typically don't put a dollar sign in front of this, but what does this 0.8882 means? Well, per the math here, this means that this is the present, we multiply this by a future cash flow. So if you were gonna get, if you're going to expect to receive $1 five years in the future, what's the present value of that? Well, that's what the discount factor is for. It's, it's just a multiplier. This tells us the $1 multiplied by this is worth today to you 88.82 cents because the spot rate is 2.40%. Okay, each maturity has a discount factor, and that will lead us to the annuity factor, which is simply a, the cumulative sum of the discount factors. So the one-year annuity factor is just that same, 0 0.9960, and the two-year annuity factor accumulates, right, and so on. So we get down here to the five-year annuity factor is 4.74. How do we interpret this? Well, this means now, instead of me giving you $1 in five years, I'm gonna give you $1 every year, at the end of one year, at the end of two year, at the end of three year, at the end of four year, at the end of five years. What will you have at the end of five years? You'll have $5. What is the present value of that annuity? It is the five dollar. It is uh, the one dollar multiplied by because that's each year what you get the annuity factor. So the present value of that would be four dollars and almost seventy five cents. That's our annuity factor, and it will allow us now to say what the par yield is. So here's the definition of the par yield. Are you ready? The par yield is the coupon rate that prices a bond to par. Uh, once again, I'll say, it is the coupon rate that prices a bond exactly to par. So what does that mean? Well, if you're gonna get a bond, and I gotta check my drawing here, draw with touch, okay, if I'm gonna give you a bond and it pays a coupon rate of C on a $100 bond, right, that is your coupon each year's, that is the coupon you're gonna get each year what is the present value of that stream of coupons? Well, we know it is, we multiply that by the annuity factor. I'm using a capital T there. 
And you're also going to get back, so that's the present value of all your coupons, but you're also going to get that principal back of 100. And that final principal is going to be worth what? The final principal multiplied by, in this case, the final discount factor. The par yield is that whatever coupon rate here happens to set the price. Here's the theoretical price because this is the present value, right? of all of the cash flow stream of the coupon plus final equal to exactly 100, right? Setting this to 100 deter makes this coupon rate a par yield. That's the mathematical definition. And you may have noticed I can cancel these hun this hundreds out. This becomes a one and then solve for my par yield. So we get the very elegant expression here my par yield is that coupon rate where I can take one minus my discount, my final discount factor and divide that by the annuity factor. So you only have three items here in our very simple definition of the par yield. So I'm just gonna go do that right now. I'm gonna take one minus the discount factor here and divide it by the annuity factor. And I'm going to copy it down is how simple that is. So, and you hopefully noticed my par yield curve, because I had this ready to plot already. My par yield curve shows up. Upward sloping as expected. It's pretty close to the spot rate curve, but it is different. But these are my par yields and I have one for each maturity. So let's focus on the five-year par yield. It's 2.36%. What does that mean? Well, let's test it. I'm going to take my 2.36% coupon. I'm going to copy it up here, but I'm going to paste the value. Okay. But I need to multiply that by the 100. There's my coupon. It's on a $100 face value. And what that means, if this is the five-year par yield, that if we get a coupon of $2.36 every year, well, what's going to be the present value of that? Well, we multiply each one by the discount factor. Right, so there's my final coupon is only worth two dollars nine cents but i also need to include the return of principal there and then if i take the sum of these i get 100 exactly and so that's the meaning of that five-year par yield 2.36 percent means that if you get this if this is the coupon rate this bond prices exactly to par here is another way to look at this. You have, the, you have the $100 to purchase the bond. That's your capital. You buy it today. Every year you get back the par yield as a coupon of $2.36. That is a return on your capital. And at the end of five years, you receive exactly your investment back. That is your return of capital. So that is a very... I think very robust way of looking at your true expected return on this bond. Okay, but that's not why I think it's the best. Here's why I think it's the best. Ready? It's because this 2.36 par yield incorporates the information of all the spot rates that came before it. That's why it's the best. It incorporates in a single value, it incorporates the information of the term structure or the spot rate term structure. So for example, let's just say we get a wild increase here in the three-year spot rate to 3%. Our forwards do what the, the forwards are very elegant, but what they do is they have this very haphazard reject, uh, uh, response to um, changes in the spot rate because they really inform an, a long-term average. So we get these jagged, out, unsmooth outcomes with the forward. But I changed this three-year zero, and notice my five-year par yield 
did shift up. As expected per our calculation, right, we solved for the par yield as a function of the annuity factor, and that annuity factor inclu included all of the zeros and their discount factors. So I change uh, any of the interim zero rates and my long-term par yield changes. So that's why I think it's the best because it gives you it includes all of the information of the term structure before it. Now, I will, I'll be remiss if I don't at least address the academic or the other reason that is cited for why they are superior. So I think this is uh, Fabosi who says this and others. But if you go to the Wikipedia page on par yields, you'll see that the argument that par yields are superior because they overcome the coupon effect. So what's the coupon effect? Well, here... I'm going to pick three coupon rates, right? So that means the, the coupons are these values. And then I'm going to solve for the bond prices as a function of the, they're going to all use the same term structure, right? So I'm going to take the coupon here, anchor that, multiply it by the discount factor, anchor that. And then that should give me the present values of my coupons. And I need to remember to add the final principle here and anchor that. So what I get, and then I'm gonna sum these. And what I'm then what I'm getting here is three different prices for three different bonds. They all use the same spot rate term structure, but their coupon rate varies. Here we have a zero coupon gone going up to 9%. Now what I'm going to do is infer the yield to maturity because that's what a yield to maturity is and that's why it's different, right? I'm going to take the price. These are all five years. Their coupons are right here. The price I just solved for and the face value is 100. Copy that over. So this is the coupon effect. A yield to maturity right, is informed by a price. So I'm going to cheat a little. Uh, I'm going to color this. I want to uh, yellow. I hate to reuse my yellow, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Not really an input, but it's really the price that we solved for. But then I took the price and inferred a yield to maturity. But that's what a yield to maturity is. A yield to maturity is the constant discount rate that we use to match the price that we have observed. So the yield to maturity is variant, including to technical factors. If I change this price here, here's the theoretical bond price. But if it trades rich at 115, whoops, 115, no, 115, my yield changes. Yield is variant to the price, which is a function of technical factors as well. But the idea with the coupon factor or the objection to the coup, um, yield to maturity is inferior to the par yield is the idea that well, my zero coupon bond happens to have a yield to maturity of 2.4%, because which is equal to the five-year spot rate because it has no other coupons. But as I increase the coupon, my yield to maturity naturally decreases because I have to effectively average in these lower zeros. So that's the coupon rate, and that is what is one of the arguments against the yield to maturity in favor of the par yield. So you can see I have a slightly different take. Well, I understand the coupon effect, but what I, what I would point out here is when we did these par yields, you hopefully noticed when we computed this par yield curve, I'm going to highlight it. One thing I did not need to do was, uh, use a bond price as input. This Each of these par yields is a function only of the uh, spot rate term structure, right? Whereas these yield to maturities are really a function of observed bond prices. So that's a big difference. It's The par yield does not depend on a specific bond. It's a function of the zero rate curve. and And as I've already said, the reason it's my, I think it's the best, is that not only is it a function of the zero rate curve, but 
each phi, each par yield on that curve is incorporating the information of each of the prior spot rates. So I hope that's a helpful sort of recap of how we get the par yield, what it means, and why it has an advantage over the spot rate, the yield to maturity, and uh, even the forward rates. Thank you.